everyone, welcome back to the channel. Well, today I wanna to show you the final product of the Pennywise uh, House on Kneebolt Street vignette that I was able to create. Uh, one of the first creations I've done this year for the Halloween setup coming up. And so it's done. Uh, if, you, if you're on Facebook, you've probably seen some of the final pictures with the lighting and everything. And I'll show you how I did all that give you a real close look at uh, the final product and some of the pieces and, and, and things that I use to be able to create uh, some of that. Uh, and so with that, let's just jump right on in. Okay, here is the final product, the finished vignette. Uh, very pleased uh, overall with the way this turned out. I think it's a perfect mix of uh, creepy and uh, and cool. It, uh, it does to me, uh, obviously it looks, I think, like the house on Nebolt Street. Um, I've added some lighting and I'll show you how I did that. But first, uh, you, you heard me say when I was gonna use the stick-on uh, anti-skid tape for the street that it looked too clean. Uh, and I did not like the way it looked, especially when you're looking at a yard and a fence and an old house like this, to have a brand new clean street just did not go with the whole genre. So what I did was, uh, in order to create um, the yard, I took uh, glue, um, PVA glue, the white glue, smeared it all over where I wanted the yard to go, and then took the playground sand, you guys have heard me say that I've used that before, use the playground sand to uh, sprinkle all over the yard. And as I was doing that, once that was done, uh, I used a glue water mixture about, I don't know, uh, there's no real scientific measurement, but you know, uh, quite a bit of glue to a whole lot more water. You shake that up and get it into a sort of a milky uh, mixture. And then I spray that all over the playground sand and then set that out in the sun or the garage and let it dry for about 24 hours or so and it becomes rock hard it's not going to go anywhere it very seldom scrapes off and as i was uh, spraying the glue water mixture on i accidentally hit some of the road up here and i was like well i'll just wipe that off with a paper towel and as i started to wipe it really didn't come off. I had some of the dust from the playground up there, or playground sand. And then I looked, I took a step back and looked at it, and I'm like, you know what, I actually like the way that looks. So I randomly uh, sprayed a little bit more all across the road to make it look, uh, you know, like oil marks or grease marks, and then put some more playground sand on it and kind of rubbed it and ground it in there, and then just uh, wiped it all off or or turned it upside down and hit the back of the board and all the sand came off. And so I'm left with this dirty road. And then I got the idea, well, maybe I should take some glue and put a pile of glue and then a pile of sand and then put some more glue water on there with a dropper so I don't spray it this time and let that soak in. And now that is, that is rock hard as well. That's not gonna go anywhere. So I put two or three piles of, uh, of uh, you know, the dirt and the sand on on that and so that's how uh, that looks and then so in order to do uh, the vegetation in the yard uh, I use what's called it's a pet netting or bedding uh, it is this stuff here the uh, preserved pet products naturals cocoa bed this is cocoa uh, coconut fibers is really what it is and you can buy this online I bought I think three packages of this on Amazon. Just search cocoa uh, bed fibers or, or cocoa, coconut fibers, and this will probably come up. It's incredibly inexpensive. I got three packages of it, and you saw me use it before in my last uh, last year's Pennywise diorama for the, um, the sewer scene. So the way I did that is I broke pieces off, and I... Uh, you know, kind of wound them together at the bottom, cut them with the scissors to make sure that they're even. And then after that was done, uh, I put a little bit of super glue gel on it. And then I showed you last video, the accelerator for that. I squirted, uh, sprayed just a little bit of accelerator on there and it dried 
uh, really hard and really fast. And I just put those in a paper plate and just kept making them and making them and making them. And then what I would do is I would take a screwdriver or a small little drill, go down through the sand, uh, take some tacky glue, put it into the hole, and then just shove those... Um, uh, those fibers down into that hole, into that tacky glue, and then just spread them out all throughout the yard. So they're just randomly spaced throughout the yard. They're not everywhere. You can kind of see where they're at and where they're not. Uh, and that really gets the dead vegetation look. Uh, they're in there pretty good. They're not coming out. I mean, you see the whole thing moving. Uh, so they're not going to sh uh, shed very much, uh, and they're, they're sort of just kind of in there. And so that's a great way to do that vegetation. And then I had some other vegetation, some dried flowers that I've had uh, laying around to use. And I did the same thing. I basically just put those down into a small hole that I made, a little bit of tacky glue, and then put those down in there. Now, those are a lot more fragile. Uh, they're more prone to certainly breaking. So I would not certainly store this uh, diorama or vignette upside down. Um, you know, everything comes off, but uh, I certainly wouldn't store it upside down just to keep these, uh, you know, alive and, and groomed and so on and, and not to break these. And then the little sunflowers, if you've seen the, the movie uh, or photographs of the house on Neibolt Street, obviously there's some wild sunflowers growing in the yard. And so I wanted to replicate those as well. And I was able to find these online. These are model train scenery. These are two inch sunflowers. Uh, I think I paid, I don't know, 11 or $12 for, I believe, 18 or 24 of them. I did not use them all, but I did use a quite, a, quite a few of them. And I put those in the same way. Uh, I put the, and they're, they come pre-built. You just take them right out of the package and pluck them into the ground. And so I, I drilled a little bitty hole uh, and then a little bit of tacky glue and then put those right down into the yard. And I think they serve their purpose incredibly well. Uh, they have the one inch variety and two inch variety. And I'm so thankful that I went with a two inch variety. Uh, actually a three inch variety may have actually worked better, but I couldn't find any of those. So but you get the idea, that's how the sunflowers look in the yard. Uh, and then I put some dead vegetation that I found at uh, uh, Hobby Lobby. I got this in the train section. This is just, I think it's just no kidding, called dead vegetation. I bought this for the last um, Pennywise diorama last year. And so I've put that on the house. I essentially just hot glued that down, uh, put some hot glue down on the window, put some more there. And I know, in the, in the picture, there's some more vegetation. Some of them, the windows are boarded up and so on. But I mean, I think I'm, I'm happy with this. And then I don't know, I think for the tree, I don't think you guys saw it completely finished, but it is now completely finished and painted. And so the way I painted this after it dried is I took a coat of black and I didn't go completely, I didn't cover it completely in black, just a lot of, a lot of coverage, but there was still some white, plenty of white left on the tree. Then I went to a brown tone, then a gray tone, and kind of smeared and mixed those paints around. But then looking at the picture of the house, the tree is more green on top and more white in the middle, and it's got some gray roots at the bottom. And the tree doesn't look exactly like it does in the movie, but or the, the photo, but I'm pretty pleased with the texture and the way this turned out. And so that is just a, a lot of detail painting, uh, a lot of dry brushing, a lot of mixing of paints to get that color uh, there. And then I, I did a little bit of green at the top, just a little bit of dry brushing green. You can kind of see that. It looks almost moldy and mossy. And then took a little bit of hot glue and some uh, leftover uh, moss and just kind of attach that with hot glue to the tree to give it its final final look. And so that's how the tree looks. And I'm pretty pleased with the way that that turned out. I'm actually really pleased with that. And that's the first time I've ever done any kind of sculpt the mold or air dry clay on any big project. And so it's pretty easy to do. And, I, and I'll certainly consider doing that again. Once I painted this tree sort of a brown and uh, gray look, 
it looked really just like an old, old, scary tree. So if you didn't go white and you wanted to put this in a forest or somewhere else, you could make a whole bunch of these and, and paint them up and they would look really, really good. Okay, and so now you guys saw the fence. I've had a hundred questions on the fence. This is all solder that I picked up at Hobby Lobby in the glass, um, stained glass section. I'm gonna do a full tutorial on how I did the fence. I'm gonna do a painting tutorial on how I painted the fence because it's all silver, it's solder, right? And so you've gotta paint it to make it look like it's rusted. Honestly, that is brown paint and orange paint. Uh, put on with a sponge, and I'll show you how to do all of that in a video, just a standalone video on the fence. I, I love detail, and so if you look at the movie or you look at the, uh, the photos for the house, there are some no trespassing signs placed in the on those that fence, and so essentially I found some no trespassing signs online. I colored them a little more sepia through um, my phone app. Uh, put them on uh, Keynote uh, for Apple. That's basically PowerPoint. Size them. I made several sizes because I didn't know what size I wanted to use and then printed those out on my printer. Cut them out with a pair of scissors and put some tacky glue and then stuck them to that cool, which is the, the material on the fence. And they stuck no problem. But it's the small details that, that really take the vignette over the top, at least in my opinion. And you can see where the sewer fits and the uh, Limax uh, Maiden Voyage. It sits in there very, very good. Not, uh, not too noticeable of a, you know, any sort of a, uh, you know, ridge or uh, sticking out of the street too far. It looks pretty good. And again, you can that can be pushed down even farther if you need it to be or, or what have you. But I, I'm pretty pleased with the way that turned out. And then for the lighting. Uh, I wanted to use, I thought, maybe white lighting on the inside. And I know it's really hard to see in the daytime, and I wished I, what, if I were to, to do this project again, which thank goodness I'm not going to, but if I were to do it again, I think I would install the lights before I put the back part of the house on so I could get them exactly where I wanted them. These, this, this is a small string of Christmas lights, LED Christmas lights, so they don't get hot. They're in a warm white. I got them off of Amazon for, I think, $11. And so that's on the inside of the house. I'll take you around and show you the back. And then I installed an LED, a green LED on the porch. I cannot get uh, under there to show you, but it's just a small little LED light. And then uh, it's hard to see, but Pennywise at night was a little dark. So I added a purple LED light that illuminates on Pennywise. And that's just sticking straight out of the ground. If I try to bring you over in this direction, uh, be patient with me here. You can see that I there's the LED light. I hit it behind a couple of rocks that I hot glued down. It's, uh, it's poked through the styrofoam and then a groove cut underneath uh, with the wires coming out the back to a small nine volt battery pack. Now you can, uh, let me, readjust this camera. You can get, uh, you can make those uh, plug in or, or whatever, but I bought these little nine volt battery boxes off of Amazon. Uh, you get, uh, I think I got five of them for, I don't know, six or seven dollars. They're not very expensive. And then I used, uh, I love this company. I've used them before. This is called, they're called uh, uh, Evan Designs, E V A N Designs.com. There, maybe you can see that a little bit better. You go online and you order LEDs and all varieties, flickering, red, green. They've got all sorts of voltages. And, and the cool part is when I ordered some last year, I ordered some green and purple. They actually, you put your phone number in and your email address and your credit card payment and everything else. They actually called me a couple of days later about my order and said, hey, are you sure you want to do this and this at the same time? Because those voltages don't, won't really work together. What are you trying to build? Let me see if I can help you. And so when I told them, they said, hey, you want this. So their customer service, I was just blown away that they actually took time to call me and verify that that's what I wanted. Uh, and so I went with them and I haven't ordered from them since, but if I need more LED lights, that's, that's exactly where I'm gonna go. 
Okay, so let me take you around to the back of the uh, house and show you um, a, uh, a look. Uh, give me a second here. Let this catch up. I know I'm showing you half of our house here. Okay, so this is the way the back looks. <clears throat> now, at night, uh, this obviously reflects on the wall, and you can kind of see in there of the LED lights, and it's really hard to get into now that everything's glued on. You can go through the bottom if you turn the house upside down, but that's a little more challenging. You can kind of see the way the lights are in there. But at night, what I'm gonna do, or what I think I'm gonna do just permanently is take some uh, black felt. You can get at the crafting store and just hot glue a little felt uh, back on this and the same thing over here, so just let it hang down. Nobody will ever see it, but it'll, it'll you know, force that light to stay in the house. And then here are those battery boxes. I just soldered the one coming out of the bottom for the purple light, put a couple of pieces of black uh, electrical tape around it, and then uh, put those uh, command strips onto the base and onto the house. And it's simply a, a flick of a switch and those go on and off. So pretty easy to, uh, to manipulate and to move. And then the house, the Christmas lights obviously just plug into a plug. And so when you unplug this, this is already affixed to the house. So the whole house just comes up and you can carry it away. The base is just sitting on there so that can come off. This is Velcroed, like I said, with a command strip. So that would obviously, you want that to stay. It's, it goes with the base, but it certainly can come off to change the battery. And then all you're left with is the base of the house. So uh, pretty easy to uh, to maneuver and and get around. So uh, anyway, well, sorry about that. That's that's the house on Kneebolt Street. That is the first big build that I wanted to do for for this season. I'm glad it's done. I'm glad it's out of the way. I love the way it turned out. Uh, very very happy with it, and uh, hopefully this will be in my uh, display vignettes for for quite a while to come so uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed uh, going along the journey with me on building this and uh, yeah it's uh, it turned out really nice okay well hopefully that gives you a better look at the house on Nebolt Street a lot of work went into this but I'm very again I'm very pleased with the way it turned out it's a uh, it's a great looking display I've had a hundreds of comments online thank you all for for providing that positive feedback. I really I really like the way it turned out and uh, uh, check that box and move on to the next display. You guys saw in my 2022 introduction video that I've got a lot planned for this year. This was one of them. I wanted to get it out of the way uh, in the very beginning so we could move on to the other stuff. So, hey, what's coming next? So, a couple things. One, I wanna do the tutorial on the fence and, and that'll be a quick, you know, five, 10 minute tutorial on how to build this fence using solder and a soldering gun and some paint and that cool material. And then we'll throw that online here within the week. Uh, and then I wanna move on to a, a few reviews. The next display that I plan on doing is the Spooky Halloween uh, Department 56 series, the collection, it's a four piece uh, set. So I'll do four reviews. And then as I'm doing the reviews or starting to think about the way I want to set this vignette up. It's going to be a fairly big, a little bit, a lot bigger than this one. Uh, the way that's going to look and design it, I'll, I'll do a video on that. Uh, and then we'll start building that one uh, together as well. And I'll take you through step by step, uh, by step by step process of how that vignette is going to come together. And again, that's the Department 56 Spooky Halloween uh, gift sets. There's, again, four of those, and, and those, that's all going to go on one big uh, vignette, village piece, whatever you want to call it. So that's coming after I do the tutorial on the fence. So, hey, with this video here, if you've liked what you've seen, please click the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channels, please consider doing so. Certainly helps to motivate me keeping, uh, keeping doing these videos. Um, uh, and if you have questions or comments, please leave those. I love to get the questions and comments. No question is too outlandish or, or crazy or vague. Ask the question. If I don't know the answer, I'll just tell you I don't know. Uh, but keep those questions coming. Keep those comments coming. I'd certainly love to read those and, and correspond with you guys. So other than that, um, this is Saturday morning. Easter is tomorrow. I hope you guys are all safe 
and sound and uh, celebrate tomorrow as you see appropriate. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's it. We'll talk real soon. Take care.